is one of the major components in relationship with the Most High. Right? I know for, for our group in LA, one of the things that was missing out of our gathering of the remnant in our living room was worship. And it was praise. And having so many talented and gifted Hebrews we have to keep that in mind when we come and we gather together, not to take the assembly for granted, not to take these musicians, singers, not to take the worship for granted. That's why I go all in. That's why you should go all in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I have a song. Whenever y'all feel it, just come on and join in. All right. All right. So as I sing this, I am not a performer. Let's make this one clear. I am not here to amuse you or to entertain you. 
I am here as a conduit of the most highs, love, his grace, his mercy, his gifts, his talents, everything that I do is to please him, right? So whenever I sing, think about you and him. Think about him and you. Think about him. So as I sing this song, I want you where you are. Close your eyes. And think of where you've been and where you are. And just say thank you. Say, I love you, Yahuwah, because he first loved you. <laughs> there is a light, a holy light. There is a light, a holy light. Let's 
that one more time. It's shining, shining for me. Coming in, coming in to me. Oh, it's shining for me. Hallelujah. Coming to me. Come on, give her another hand. Give my little niece a hand. She's uh, from uh, South America. Sure now, they flew out here to be at this Sukkot. When she came through the door, come here, baby. When she came through the door, she said, Uncle Moray. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Uncle love you. You know that? You make my heart happy every time I see you. Y'all give her a hand. Thank you so much. Man. Before the, uh, tomorrow night, we're going to have a talent show. Y'all going to hear her sing tomorrow. Okay. Y'all gonna hear this girl sing tomorrow, you're gonna be like, whoa, what is that all about? She's gifted. Her parents are here all the way from South America. Y'all stand up. She didn't come by herself. Y'all stand up. And... <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> she thought I'd be coming back. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's incredible. We're dealing with an incredible week. Many of you all took off work, and some of you all got out of school. You read the text, and you saw how important it was that we gather, and so therefore you gathered in obedience. And uh, we give all praises and honor and glory. After this, we're going to go down to the water and baptize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all gonna get in the water and get baptized? Oh my goodness. What's up? 40, 50 y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, I'm gonna need somebody to stand with me in the, in the water with them. So those of you who wanna just get in the water with me, you got some brothers that'll get in there with me. We're gonna have a great time. I need uh, everybody to grab like a hand drum or something to beat on the bottom of a bowl or something because when we get down there, we gotta have a rhythm. We got to have some singing and some humming or something going on as we get down in that water and baptize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, uh, I studied this Bible and to see things, you know. It's like the, like the scriptures are just um, like they're in uh, I used to say HD but they say it's something even brighter than that now 4K it's 4K now baby we can, we can see it because we know the who the what the where, the when, the how it's incredible Absolutely incredible. Can we just do this just in honor of this Shakot because we're going to talk about our king today? Would you stand? I want you to turn to um, St. John chapter 7. St. John chapter 7. We're just going to start in, at verse one listen to this listen to this text it's incredible y'all gotta roll with me too we gotta 
read this together. I'm reading out the King James, not because I think it's perfect, but because it's the most commonly known script. Because sometimes we bring out stuff in the text when we teach, and folks write us and say, what Bible are you using? <laughs> like the same Bible you read. We just changed the names back to the original. Hallelujah. Yeah. After these things, verse 1, I mean chapter 7, verse 1. After these things, Yeshua, talk back. Walked in Wal Galilee. Mm -hmm, for he would not walk in Jewry, which is really Jerusalem. Because the Jews sought to what? Oh my goodness. When you read that text, understand that when, when John does that, he's not necessarily talking about all the people. He's talking about the leadership of the Yehudian, who we find out later in this book is already sold out to Rome. They are now the traitors of his people. Y'all get that? You find out later that they are afraid of the Messiah because they're afraid Rome will remove them out of their place. So that's when you see that word, the Jews, all right? So it says, because the Jews sought to kill him, verse 2. Now the what? Of what? Was what? Hold on for a minute. The feast of what? Is this the New Testament? The Feast of Tabernacle in the New Testament? <laughs> Come on, roll with me. And his, his brethren therefore said unto him, And go where? That thy disciples also might see the work that thou doest. Come on, verse 4. For no mm -hmm, that doeth any and he himself what? If you do these things, what do you say? What they say? Show thyself to the world. Uh, can I tell you what they're doing to him right here? They trying to round about say he's sort of a punk. Oh uh, yeah, you would do all this stuff in secret. But if you want to be known and all that, won't you go on up to the feast where everybody gonna be? They're pushing him right here. So you got to read the text with understanding, Zion. They said, uh, for no man that doeth anything in secret and he himself seek to be known openly if they said you do these things. That's what he said, if. They're talking to your king, Hamasiah. He said, go show yourself. Verse 5 proves why they talk to him like that. Read it. Unbelievers always talk stupid. When it comes to the Hamashiach. And Yeshua said unto them. Come on. My time, My time is not yet come. My time. Is not yet come. But what did he say? But your time is always ready. Ooh, he said but your time is always ready. In other words. You know my time to be glorified. Is coming. But y'all want to be glorified every day. All day. You always trying to put yourself out. You always want to be seen. You always got to be the center of attention. Don't that sound like Hebrew? Verse 7. The world cannot hate you. Whoa, wait, wait, huh? The world can't hate you. It says, but it hates me. I'm going to get that one. I got to deal with that one for sure. I'll get that one in a second. Why does the world hate Yeshua, Yahushua, HaMessiah? It's right here. Here's that key. Because what? That what? Be because I tell the world with no, it with no uncertainty. 
I don't bite my tongue. I don't beat around the bush. I let the world know right off the bat, everything y'all do is evil. Your Christmas trees is evil. Heat miser and snow miser and the Grinch, evil. Your East Days, evil. Painting up your painting your kids like the devil once a year, having them begging strangers for candy, that's evil. Eating skunks and bats and rats and it's all evil. And I ain't got no problem telling folk. Everything that is birthed out of the evil heart of man is evil. He said, that's why they do what? Hate me. See, everybody in the Christian church want everybody to think that everybody loves Jesus. Oh, you're talking about sweet, sweet Jesus. The one who wouldn't hurt a fly? Yeah, we're going to figure that out today, Zion. He said, I testify because its works are evil. Then what do you say in verse 8? He said, but y'all going up now. Why did he tell him to go? Because he's Torah. And Torah commanded that all Hebrew men three times a year go up to Jerusalem to keep the feast. And when the Messiah was here himself, you did not hear him say, oh, but now that I'm here, I mean, y'all cool, you ain't got to go. Just kick it with me. You want your eyes open, it can't close, Zion. You can see it plain as day. He says, for my time is not yet full come. And when he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Verse 10. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he up unto the feast. What? Who went to the feast? But I thought since he came here... We don't need to keep the feast because now he's here. But then we read he kept it. And we tell people we keep in tabernacle. And they say, but where'd you get that from? Somewhere in the Old Testament. And we say, no, we read it in John. And then they say, where at? When they say that, you know you're dealing with an ignoramus. <laughs> Stop. Well, that's just me. I stopped the conversation. Don't try to correct me on something you ain't read. Show me that in the New Testament. No, Google it, baby. It's easy. <laughs> I'm not being mean. I'm trying to be honest. And then he went up to the feast, not openly, but as it were, what? I like to call that incognito. <laughs> <laughs> then the, come on. The, so the Jews, we're talking about the leaders and the people, sought him at the feast. They, were, they knew he was coming. They were looking for him. And, and said what? Where is he? Verse 12. And for some said, he is a good man. Others said, no how be it? For fear, Yahushua at the Feast of Tabernacle, part one. Y'all be seated. Repeat after me, say, Yahushua at the Feast of Tabernacle, part one. We're going to get to all three parts. we got enough nights left. We're going to reveal some things to you, Zion. First of all, we all claim to follow our King, Yeshua. Therefore, if he kept the feast, then following him would then mean... We keep the feast. But we have people that would oppose what we're doing who say you should not keep the feast or they make excuses 
for not keeping Yah's feast. Can I show them? Can I, can I come up with some? Maybe y'all come up with some better ones than me, but these are the excuses that I've heard. The reason we don't keep the feast is because we in the New Testament. Anybody hear that one? So is this book of John in the Old Testament? Wrong answer. The Feast of Tabernacle is in what y'all call the New Testament or the New Book, just like it's in what y'all call the Old Book. Here's another one I heard. The reason why we don't keep the feast is because we under grace. So you don't think that the people that was with Yeshua, who the Bible says was full of grace and truth, were under grace? Here's another one. We don't have to keep the feast because they were shadows and we have sweet Jesus now. I don't even have to tell you how ridiculous that is when he himself. <laughs> we read it. Come on, y'all. Did we read it? So how is that your excuse when he kept the feast? And he is the manifestation or he is the actualization of the feast. And he kept it anyway. Have you heard this one? Well, you can't keep the feast if you're in captivity. You're not in the land. Uh, you do know like the first 40 Passovers and the <laughs> first 40 feasts were kept outside of Holy Jerusalem, right? See, I, don't, I, 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 can't, I can't deal with this ignorance of the script because the very first capital city of of the land that that we worshiped in was not Jerusalem. Did y'all know that? That's right. And yet they were still keeping the feast. Some people's excuses for not keeping the feast are, and, and I'm trying to find a better word, they're stupid. Have you heard this one? I'm not going to keep the feast because nobody knows the exact day that the feast was held. Ooh, try that with your daddy or with your mama. So make sure you clean up the room and then meet me over here at such and such. Well, I don't know exactly what time he's coming home. So maybe I'm just not going to clean the room at all. I'll be home sometime this evening. I want you to have a grass mold and the garbage taken out. Did he give me an exact minute in time? So, so and somebody's arguing. He said this evening. Is evening when the sun is like below the horizon? Or when it's on the horizon? Or is it when it's starting to go down? And, you keep, and then you arguing all day and never cut the grass. Y'all not hearing me. Never take out the trash because you're arguing what is the evening. I'm trying to let this stuff sink in so that you all can, can have a word to resist the stupidity or the sottish thinking of our people in regards to keeping our feast. But these same people don't have a problem preparing a month ahead of time for the hella days of Hasatan. Ain't nobody arguing when to go get your tree. Matter of fact, people be talking about the sooner the better, baby. The sooner the better. 
Somebody said, I start my shopping right after Thanksgiving. Do y'all understand how hypocritical we are? When we want to do something, we make it a priority. We spend money we don't got. We charging evil. Let me tell you something. We're charging. We're making payments on evil after the feast is over. You got to think about how crazy that is. I, uh, uh, this is what I heard recently. Because you do know, uh, Hula and I probably uh, get more emails and comments than like a lot of people that are out there teaching. Some of them we share with each other because they're just so funny. Uh, it's sad, but funny. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but still funny. <laughs> one, person, one person said, I'm not going keep to keep those feasts because my pastor said I don't have to. So like, yo, pastor, I mean, you still listening to him? All this truth out there? So I guess he told you Sunday was cool, too. Yeah. And I guess you eating pig meat, too, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you still listen to him, and he don't know when the Shabbat is? Ask, he, don't know the, the, he don't know the feast days? He don't know anything about the Bible, but when it comes to trusting him or trusting Yah, you're going to take his word for it. My pastor. The Bible says, and Yah will give you pastors after his heart that will feed you Torah. That's this book. Not, you know, I don't need that. This book, not what they think or what they feel. So anybody not doing that is not a pastor. I have to remind Hebrews is close to me who come out to Christian church, still calling the churches that they came out of, still calling that man pastor. He's not pastor. He's a demon. He's satanic. He is an imitator. He works for Hasatan. It don't mean he can't change jobs. But currently, he's not employed by Yah. Don't give him the title that he don't belong, that he don't deserve. Got so quiet in here. Y'all still got loyalty to the Christian church, I see. One of these days, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. They telling you to show up on Sunday when the Shabbat is on the Saturday. They're telling you to keep Christmas, but they don't keep the festival called Hanukkah, which is the dedication. They're telling you to get ready for Easter because we've been have one of the biggest Easter Sundays we ever had. I had my brother testify today that one of the pastors in this country rented a helicopter and threw eggs out to kids. <laughs> He's in the room. I ain't making this up. He's the, there's his hand right there. Y'all see. He said next year he tried to top the helicopter thing so this time, he went up in a helicopter, and he filled the eggs with money, then threw them out. So the children was like, I received a blessing in the egg. And then when you leave, you still calling him your pastor? Zion, we saw this Because my pastor said so is not enough reason to break y'all's laws. I got one more. I got one more. 
One person said the reason we don't keep the law is because, or keep the feast, is because the feasts are for the Jew. And so then when you, oh yeah, you can put it right there. You can put it right here. Does it work? Yeah, you can tow up. Yeah, these flies, man. <laughs> It ain't, uh, uh, Damien told us earlier today, he said, well, we ain't under no plague. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, you sure? To, uh, we ain't under no plague, because those plagues, they was everywhere. You know, so, hey, hallelujah, I can get through this. Do a little fanning, y'all be all right, I'll be all right. Watch this one. He said, that's for the Jews. But then when you ask them the simple question, do you know that the word Jew is not even in the Bible? And they say, no, yes, it is. It's right here. So no, that word is Yehudian. And do you know who the Yehudians were? They were the people who lived in Judea or in the Yehudian land. And do you know who those people are? Now, by this time, you done lost them anyway. But then you tell them to go Google them. Y'all got y'all know where I'm going with this? They're saying, I'll I will acquiesce to the to say, yes, the Jewish people have to keep those laws. And you ask them why? Because they are in a blood covenant with Yah. But then when you try to tell them, well, the truth is. We were the ones in the holes of them slave ships that sailed us back to Egypt again in bondage and slavery and hard taskmasters. And we were the ones, according to the text, scattered to the four corners of the earth. We were the ones who they snatched our name and our language and our religion and our family and our culture. We were the ones hung and beat and lynched and raped and torn apart. And we were the ones that, ooh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop because I feel something ain't right. I mean, I'm, I'm just they was wrong. Nobody got treated like us, as bad as us, as long as when we came out of captivity, we didn't even know who we were. We came out of captivity eating swine flesh, talking a foreign tongue, keeping pagan days, worshiping white Jesus. Had him hanging up in our houses. No, baby, we the Hebrews, and you write about one thing. We are in a blood covenant with him. Hallelujah. And therefore, if you think that the Hebrews are supposed to keep the covenant, then that's why I'm keeping the feast. Hallelujah. No, watch this, watch this. I had a pig meat eating preacher who was about 700 pounds. He's eating. He was, he was sucking on swine flesh. And I was talking to him. I said, hey, man, uh, uh, you know the most high you know, has uh, set us apart when it comes to our diet. You want to tell me that? <laughs> Tearing that swine. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tell you something. Tearing that swine flesh up. And I said, I said to him, I said, well, you do know we got to keep the commandments. And he said, which ones? <laughs> the ones Old Testament God or Jesus? I said, boy, <laughs> this, this, this unconscious Hebrew got two gods. He's got one in the old that he has deemed unimportant and have, re and he's replaced that one. Now watch what I'm going to tell you. 
with a figment of his imagination. White Jesus is just as big as a lie as your fairy godmother, the tooth fairy, mother nature, Peter Cottontail. <laughs> I said, man, we got to keep the feast of Yah. He said, no, you don't keep the feast. You have to do it in your heart. So I said, are you doing it in your heart? <laughs> it's all wrapped up in Jesus, man. It's all wrapped up in Jesus. And you got to show me why you keeping the feast. <laughs> I said, okay, no problem. Somebody precept for me. Get, get, get for me 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And we just read one verse. Verse 8. I, don't, I, don't, I could do the whole chapter, but verse 8. Um, they can't hear you in uh, England and, and they can't hear you in Canada. Wait, wait, wait. Is that is that all in verse 8? Yes. Read it again. Because somebody in Bangladesh said, hold on, let me interpret that. Read it loud. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Pause. Did you, did you hear it? Yes. Is this Old or New Testament? New Testament. Do you know who wrote this letter? Paul, Shaul, the same one they say told him they didn't have to keep the feast. You hear a command right in the text. Therefore, let us, what? Keep the feast. Shouldn't he be teaching, therefore, don't keep the feast? Because now we are under grace and not the law. Do you understand Zion? Oh, that's good. Appreciate this. Do you understand Zion, how they twist what he says? When you read it just now, it said, keep the feast. And he said, and, and don't do it with just that old le uh, bread leaven, you know, and stuff like that. In other words, don't just go through the motions of removing like leaven and things out of your, out of your house when you're not getting sin out of your life. He never told the person not to keep the feast. He was saying, keep the feast, but do it with a righteous disposition, a right attitude, and a right heart. Now, your pig meat eating preacher ain't going to never teach you that. Because he knows if you keep the feast, that means you also got to keep the dietary laws. And because they are infatuated with pigs, they worship swine. They even tell you in their language. They say, bacon calls my name. <laughs> this is the Shabbat. I've seen them handle it. It's a rat. It's the nastiest thing on planet Earth. I'm not going to stay there long today. But I've seen them handle it delicately like it was a $200 piece of steak. Like, You're eating a rat. <laughs> and that's the person you're getting ready to listen to over the preachers and prophets of the text? In John, the most popular New Testament book, if you get past John 3.16, and can make it a couple of more chapters over. You see in the Bible. Y'all got your Bibles, right? I'm not making this up. 
You see in the Bible that it says, after these things, Yeshua walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry or Jerusalem because the Jews, which are the leadership, sought to kill him. Now I want you to understand something. The leadership wanted him dead. There was a threat on his life. Can I say it like this? To make it live? Mm -hmm. On every olive tree and on every fig tree, it was a sign nailed to it with a fella in a fro. <laughs> Wanted. Dead or alive. Your whole shoe. If you see him, you could either kill him, drag his body in here, or drag him in alive. It don't matter. And then we'll kill him. There was a bounty on his head. And they knew they was going to get him if he came to the feast. Do you understand that? Do you understand by reading the text, surface reading of the text, that it was no secret that they was going to kill him at the feast. Do y'all get that? It's on the surface of the text because the Jews sought to kill him. And yet, even with the threat of death, Yeshua went to the feast. Knowing they wanted to kill him there, he still went in order to honor Torah. And we got some Hebrews won't go across the street to keep the feast. And yet our king kept it even though his life was being threatened not by the pawns of life, but by the leadership. His brothers was even capping on him. I told y'all this is a, the Hebrews, right? So Joseph had other children besides Yehoshua is not his biological. Y'all know that, right? I wish I had time, but not on this lesson. But there's other children in the family and they like, you going? Because they knew there was a death penalty on him. They was like, if you all that, go on up there. And most high said he wouldn't walk up there because they wanted to kill him. But then his brother said, go on up there like, go on up there and die. Here's wisdom, Zion. His not going there was not because he was afraid they was going to kill him. It's because if they would have tried something, he could have killed them. When you understand that he has all power to speak and a man lay down and die, speak again, the man get up and breathe. And then say something else and the same man die again. He ain't scared of nobody. But because he's meek, because he's under control, but he's still a Hebrew and he's still from the tribe of Yehuda, which is a killing tribe. Yehuda ain't no punk tribe. Did you hear the story? The song of David, who was from the tribe of Judah. Did you hear that song? Now, you know Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. But David was from the tribe of Yehuda. And when they went to battle and came back with the kill record. Hey, let me see here. They had the secretary. Saul. David. All right, Saul got a thousand. They like, ah, woo, he done killed a thousand. You ready for David? Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. 
Mm-hmm. Man, you still count? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all come back in 30 minutes. This is this dude been doing some kid. <laughs> David has killed 10,000. Do y'all understand that that lion is still in us? Which is the one thing that our enemies fear more than ever. They fear the awakening because they turn the lion into a pussycat. They had us in cages and things. But now the most high is touching us on the shoulder man like, uh, you 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 not you not no pussy cat. So what am I? Say look in the mirror. You look in the mirror and say I don't see nothing. He said, grow your beard. <laughs> Brother grow his beard. He'd be like, oh my goodness gracious, scared myself. <laughs> <laughs> Our problem. Y'all, as a nation, we it ain't it ain't fear necessarily of what people gonna do to us, but what, what we gonna do to them. Messiah was like, I'm just not gonna get in that because I'm on mission, and they got a death threat out on me, and if somebody try it, I may have to wipe them all out. Y'all looking at me funny, so let me just quickly take you to Golgotha. So I put you back in the mindset of the Messiah. Do you remember when they were going through the crucifixion process? But he kept saying, well, you can't see it in English because it, 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 it has him only saying it once. But when you look at the actual uh, syntax, you'll discover that he kept saying, Abba, forgive them. Abba, forgive them. Abba, forgive them. Abba, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. And the reason that he kept saying they don't know what they're doing because they kept pushing him and pushing him and he knew what he had to do, but he was like, they ain't getting it and I'm on the edge. Because he had already told Pilate, man, you don't even understand. I could just look up right now to my father and he will send a legion of angels. It wouldn't be a cockroach living when he got through with y'all. So that idea of him repeating that over and over and over was so that he could stay true to his mission and become the sacrifice needed to appease the anger of Abba Yah against his people. Now let me get back in this text. I want to show y'all something. It's incredible. At the threat of death, he goes to the feast anyway. Y'all saw it. Now watch this. When he, when, when, it says, then the Jews that sought him at the feast said, where is he? Everybody's looking for him. Six million people, they're trying to find one. Where is he? And there was, talk back, verse 12, much murmuring. That means everybody was talking about it. And then some said, well, he's a good man. Others said, no, no, he's deceiving the people. That's us again. You can see us in that. Howbeit, no man spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. Wait a minute. So the Jews got everybody silent, scared. I'm looking right now, I got a couple of brothers across the nation. We're looking for men who ain't scared. If you're scared, we, we love you, but get in the back with the girls. You can't, you can't ride up in the front with us because we can't have that kind of fear trying to lead the children of Israel. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Because if the leadership is quaking, then the fellowship gonna be like, wait a minute, he quaking? What does he know that we... You know what I'm saying? So we, we have to be careful, Zion, of who we put out in front as our leadership. Can't no sissy punks lead us as a nation. 
But the leaders, but the, but the common man was so scared of, they wouldn't even mention anything about the Messiah, just like today. Watch this. Watch this. Now about, verse 14, watch this, watch this. Now about the, come on, the midst of the feast, Yeshua went up where? Uh, that don't sound like nobody's scared to me. He waited till it got going good. When everybody was there. Went up into the temple and taught. It's right in the Bible. And the Jews marveled saying, how does, how know what this man let us have and never learned? And Yeshua answered them and said, my doctrine ain't mine. Uh-oh. Where you at, uh, Mr. Christian? They said, we following the doctrine of Jesus, not the doctrine of God. We follow the teachings of Christ, not the teachings of Yahweh. But then the actual Hamasiach said, my doctrine, talk about, come on here, is what? This ain't mine. Talk about you following something. Like, oh, you think I came to start some new religion? No, my doctrine is not mine. He literally said it, but... He is that what? Come on, come on. This come from the one that sent me. And it ain't Uncle Joe. If any man will do, come on. His will, he shall know the what? Wait, if any man just knows the will or do, do the will. So, Zion, in order for us to really know doctrine, we have to do it. Some of you all have read about Sukkot, but never kept it. But by keeping it this year, you know it now better than you ever knew it. Because you're learning stuff just walking around. Like the moon is bright. It's throwing a shadow. That's why I tell all these calendar people, y'all, stay in your room, fight it out. 20 different calendars floating around the world. Ain't got time for that. I'm getting ready to count seven new moons. Starting with the first sliver. After the equinox in the spring. And when I get to that seventh month and that 14th day leading into the 15th day, uh, I'm getting ready to keep Sukkot. Now, if I'm a few days early, a few days late, it'll be all right. The Messiah will straighten all that out when he get back. But that's not going to be a reason for me not to gather together with the people of Yah and keep the feast. Too many lessons to be learned when we gather like this. I can look up in the sky and say, yeah, this is it. This is the time. I don't have to be sitting on the computer fighting you. I can't understand how you following that. One person told Hula, you might as well keep Christmas if you ain't going to be on the exact date. That was the first time I heard Hula cuss online. I said, ooh, y'all ringing the wrong bells now. <laughs> Do you see them keeping the feast, Zion? Do you see him going into the feast when everybody got there? He's not on the outskirts. He don't walk straight up into the temple. Watch this. Watch this. But you got to do it to know the doctrine. He said, then you'll know whether it be of Yah or whether I speak it of myself. He said, you'll know it. He's not coming up with no new teaching, y'all. That, that's why it's so stupid to hear people say we follow Christ as though they're saying we don't have to follow Yah. He's like, my doctrine is his. There's no change in anything. He that speaketh of himself seeks his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent me, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Talking about Yah. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keep the law? Uh oh. There go them uh, Moses guys. He's saying, he's saying, now watch this. Y'all here talking about you following Moses. 
and you seeking to kill me. Y'all read it. Read it. So, I, so the world don't. The world think I put that in there just now. Somebody read that verse. Did not Moses give you the law? Come on. And yet none of you keepeth the law. Why go ye about to kill me? So you know it's against Torah to kill an innocent man, right? There is a commandment that was given on Sinai to the children of Yisrael that says, Thou shall, talk back. What? And yet at this feast of tabernacle, they're trying to kill him. So he just, that's why I told y'all, and I don't keep using this word punk, but I'm just trying to think of a better word. He just doesn't back down from nothing. He didn't go up there like, you know, Stephen and Fetch did well. You know, I know y'all kind of feel one way about me, but I'm really not like that, sir. He was like, if you make it plain, y'all the ones breaking Moshe's laws, not me. We have to feast it, but you got murder in your heart. It's right in there. Now watch this. Verse 20. The people answered and said, People said, man, you fool the devil. Ain't nobody here trying to kill you. Well, we done already read that everybody was looking for him because it was out that they were trying to kill him. But when he confronted them, you see the punk come out. I don't know where you got that from. You must be full of the devil. Ain't nobody trying to kill you. And he said, I have done one work. And ye all marvel. Moses, therefore, gave you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of who? Father. So who was the first person who, who, gave, who was circumcised? Abraham. Come on, y'all already know the Bible. That's what I like about y'all. He said, man, that didn't come from Moses, and you know it. Watch this. And you circumcise a man on the Shabbat, which means you take away something from his flesh. Now watch what he says. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry at me? I love this line. Oh my goodness. I'm going to shut it down. This is just part one. Watch this. He says, are you angry at me because I made a man every wood hole on the Shabbat? He like. Y'all still mad about that Passover thing I did? <laughs> Flip back in your Bible about two chapters to chapter five. St. John chapter five. Three chapters. Let's go to chapter five. Two chapters here. Chapter five. Start at verse one. Watch this. So we're going back about six months. Watch this. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. What do you think this feast was? This is Passover. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the movement of the water. For the angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped into it was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty-eight third and eight years. Thirty and eight years. When Yeshua saw him lie and knew that he had now been a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man said unto him, Sir, I have no man when the water's troubled to put me in the pool. But while I'm coming, another step is down before me. Ain't that just a Hebrew's response? Maybe you might help me. Oh, Dude, come on, man. I didn't ask you all that. I said, do you want to be well? You tell me why you're not well. Uh, this is a yes or no question. I wish I had time. It's a whole nother message. But he said unto him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked. On the same day was the Shabbat. The Jews therefore said unto him, That was cured. It's the Shabbat. It's 
not lawful for you to be carrying your bed. And he answered and said, he that made me whole, the same said, take up thy bed and walk. Then they asked him, what man, uh-oh, is it, is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he said, that was healed, I'm, I'm sorry, and he that was healed was not who it was, for Yeshua had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Yeshua found him in the temple and said, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come up on thee or come unto thee. The man departed and told you the Jew that it was Yeshua which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews come on. Please talk back to me. Did what? And sought to slay him. So they didn't get him then. So from Passover, which was a gathering. They got together and was working on a great plot how they would get him if he showed up at Sukkot. And so when he showed up at Sukkot, he was like, y'all still mad at that healing thing I did? You still want to kill me for that? Now do you see it? Does the story now make more sense to you? Can you see the tension? Can you see the confrontation? Now watch what they say back to him. It says, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then some of them of Jerusalem, then said some of them of Jerusalem, verse 25, I'm back in John 7. Is not this he whom they seek to kill? They're like, wait a minute. Wait, ain't that the one they all were talking about? When he get here, we're going to kill that nigga. But he ain't going to make it one more day. One more day. I guarantee you. Let him step foot at this tree. Let him step foot here. I cross the line. Walk in them gates. He's a dead man. Dead man. And then here he come walking in. Walk straight up into the temple. And ain't nobody doing nothing. And the people was like, man, what's all that talking you was doing, dude? <laughs> man, that's him, ain't it? <laughs> they said, man, not only is he not dead, he's speaking boldly. <laughs> Remember I told you he wasn't no punk, no sissy. Get that blue-eyed, blonde-haired, homosexual Jesus out your mind. He's a lion from the tribe of Yehuda, skin black like a skillet, dreads probably all the way down his back, eyes like frames of fire, built like the Hulk. What are you talking about? His presence alone struck fear in people. Had a voice like your code. Sometimes I hear him talking, I'll be way across him. And when he speaks, I'll be like, Ooh, did you hear that? No, I'm, I'm serious. That's from the tribe of Yehuda. Uh, they don't have that voice in China. Ain't nobody in India got that. My daddy used to, you know, he was soft-spoken most of the time, but when he would holler, you could hear, some of y'all know him, or knew him, he's going on now, but my pops could be in the top row at the football game, and I'd be on the field playing, and there'd be a bad call, he would holler, and the ref would turn around. <laughs> y'all think I'm joking, Uncle, Uncle, am I telling the truth? When he roared, it was just outrageous. So we always try to keep pops in that, hey. <laughs> now, if we are of Judah, and we're not the promised king, what did our king have? Who, based on the text, is the king of kings. 
and the master of masters, when I read Revelation, it says his voice was that of many waters. You ever go to the ocean and hear that wave crashing? That's what they said. He's speaking boldly and ain't nobody doing nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to change your image of your Messiah. You're going to stay in this text. You're going to see it. He's speaking boldly and they say nothing to him. Watch this. Do the rulers know? Uh-oh. Now you see I'm talking about the rulers being the evil ones, right? Because it's here. They said, do the rulers know indeed that he is, now the word very, should be truly or the truth. Do they really know truthfully that that's him? And the answer is yes. Everybody know it, but you, Zion, you just come into the realization of who he is. The leadership been knowing who he is and who you are. Yeah, they know. They don't like him. They don't want him. How be it? We know this man. We know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, for the homicide, no man knows whence he is. Now all this old crazy false doctrine going to come in. Watch this. Then cried Yeshua in the temple. Watch this. As he talked, he picked his voice up even louder. Does it sound like somebody backing down? Does it sound like a sissy? A scaredy cat? A yellow back? A noodle back? No, I think he's getting louder. Because the text says he's getting louder. And this is what he said. I hear y'all murmuring. But you both know me. And you know whence I am. I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true. Whom you know not. Uh oh. He told them right point blank in their face. You don't even know y'all. But I know him. For I'm from him. And he has sent me. Then they sought to take him. Watch this. But what? No man. Oh. They was like, Paul, we should go get it right now. We just, we should, we, let's just go get it. Yeah, man, let's just go get it. Come on, let's go get it. You go. No, you go. No, you go. No, 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 no. Yeah. What are we talking about here? Come on, Hebrews, y'all bad. They sought to take him, no man laid hands on him because what? And many of the people did what? So don't believe, y'all, that nobody believed the Messiah of our people. That's a lie from the Christian church. There's several verses that said many of the Hebrews believed on him. Several verses throughout the Bible. And then it says, when Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these that this man has done? They're like, dude, come on, man. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. And the Pharisees and chief priests sent officers, punks, sissies. Why did y'all go? You the one talking all that madness about what you was going to do as soon as he stepped in the temple. So what they did behind the scenes was they called the cops. Am I reading it in the book? They sent officers to do what? Verse 33, and Yeshua said unto them, what? Uh-huh, come on. And, come on, and you shall, and shall, and where? Come on. Then said the Jews among themselves, where is he going to go? that we shall not find him. Will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? She ain't talking crazy now. What manner of saying is this? You shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither you cannot come. Verse 37, I'm going to pick this up um, Monday. Verse 37, what does it say? Out 
This is what he said when they were talking about where you going to go and is he going to the Gentiles and all that. On that last day of the feast, he stood up and cried. He said, if any man is thirsty, come to me. Forget Annas, Kephas, all these Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees. The answer is not in them, it's in me. If you're thirsty, you need to come to me. I'm the only one that has the power to satisfy the thirst from the inside out. And I'm going to do it based on the script. As the scriptures. You do know that he was holding the same scriptures you hold. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That ain't got nothing to do with no speaking in tongues. That's one of the, again, that's one of them dumb Christian doctrines. He says, as the scripture says, which means every time you hear that line, you got to go back into your quote unquote Old Testament and find that scripture and then find the context in what it was written. That's how you then know what he's saying. Not based on some European trying to take your money. But this he spake of the spirits which they that believe on him should receive. That's the Ruach. Which I told the brethren on last night is always Torah. It's the life of Torah. Watch this. For the Ruach was not yet given because that Yeshua was not yet glorified. I'll get to that later. Many of the people therefore when, heard, when they heard this saying said, of a truth, this is a prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? And not the scripture said, Christ come from the seed of David out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. You see some more terrible doctrine. Not one person went up to him and said, uh, where was you born? They all just assuming. Well, you know, the scriptures say he's supposed to. Well, he's from Galilee, ain't he? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, ain't nothing come out of Galilee. Like, uh, bruh, I was born in Bethlehem. I was raised in Nazareth. But my mama, in her ninth month, watch this, Sukkot rolled around. And she was going to stay home and just let Joseph go. But Caesar, Augustus, sent out a decree that all of Israel should be taxed. And therefore, everybody had to go back to their home city. So therefore, since we were going to keep the feast anyway, my folk from Bethlehem. So Miriam had to take the baby. And on the first day of the Feast of Tabernacle, it was so crowded, there was no room for her to have the baby in the inn. And like I said the other night, therefore, she had him, come on, who said that? In a sukkah. But they arguing over his birth, and not one person asked him a simple question. Uh, excuse me, based on the text, the Messiah had to come from... You no, know, nobody even asked him. Just like the ignorant Christians don't do it, because they don't know either. The Muslims don't know. The Buddhists don't know. But the Hebrews know. What verse did I stop at? Oh, so 43. So there was a division among the people because of him. Oh, there it is again. I'm trying to help you, Zion. It's always a division when people stand up for the, that's what he does. He's going to divide the room every time he comes in. No doubt about it. And some of them would have taken him. <laughs> there it is again. But nobody laid a hand on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees. And they say unto them, why ain't you took him? Man, how come you didn't bring him? How come he ain't in cuffs right now? How come you didn't take him? Look at the answer. The police 
the officers, the baddest cats in the land, the ones with the badge to exercise force if they want to, said, never, 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 ever. Said, Man, why didn't you get him? Never. I, Look, man, we hired you. We paying you good money. You had one job. Get him and bring him to us. <laughs> never. We ain't never heard. As a matter of fact, one of them said, never have a human being ever speak like him. They came to arrest him. But his speech arrested them. Can you see it, Zion? Is it now plain as day to you? That every time you look at it now, you will never, ever be fooled. Then, the, then answered them the Pharisees, are you also deceived? Oh, now they deceived. Okay, then Pharisees, go get him yourself. See, when you read the text, you will see it wasn't the Messiah that was the noodle back and the pump. It was these guys who always operating behind the scenes. And then he says, and I'm done right, right when I get to this last word. Then answer the Pharisees, are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed in him? This is what he said. He said, you old dumb cops. Do you see any of us, any of us leaders believing on him? Huh? You see any of us preachers following him? You see any of us bishops following him? Any of us high priests following him? Just like these non-messianic maniacs running around. The, you don't see me following, no, you're sure. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he says right here, he says, Nicodemus said, uh, I, I got something to say. <laughs> Has any of us been following him? Nicodemus was like, because you know, he came to the Messiah at night. <laughs> one, time he, one time he made, he like, shoot, I'm going to go talk to this fellow myself. I, man, please. When everybody was snoring at two in the morning, man, he was like, Sure, sure. Hey, man. Dude, I need to talk to you. Man. Oh, man. I mean, oh, we all been talking about you, man. It's all over town. It's like, man, you be doing like these miracle stuff, man. I'm just, oh, man, who are you hooked up with, dude? Where are you getting all this power from, man? Like, I mean, you know, I mean, it's God with you. I mean, are you it or what? And the Messiah was like, man, look. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be born again. <laughs> man, don't call me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Born again, what you mean? Like, get back in my mama's womb. I'm an old man. What are you talking about? He's like, really, dude? It's two in the morning and you come to my tent asking me a bunch of questions and you don't understand the new birth. How are you even a leader in my, among my people? Are my people really in that bad a shape? It's the same Nicodemus here. That's right. Basically, what he's going to do, and I'll, start, I'll pick this up on Monday when I shut it, I'm gonna shut it down. Pick it up on Monday, pick it back up. When he said, Does our law condemn a man before we hear him? And what Nicodemus was doing on a roundabout way and saying, y'all, we should listen to what he has to say. And all I want to say to you all is, we need to listen to what he has to say. Stop listening to what other people have said. Get your ear out of all Christian circles. It's a deception on a whole nother level. You can't win that battle. You can forget it. 
The hooks are too deep. Listen to him. Let him be your rule. Let him be your guide. Imitate him. Follow him. That's the only way, Zion, that we're going to reclaim who we are, whose we are, and prepare ourselves to enter into the kingdom. Yeshua went to the Feast of Tabernacles. Therefore, we are keeping the feast. This is part one. See you Monday for part two. Amen. Thank you.